The woods were deep, and they were full of life. And that girl, as she walked through the woods, she could see that canopy of leaves up above her, a hundred feet up above her, those oak trees stretched that high. And as she looked up, she could see those leaves were golden underneath where that sun was shining up above. And that sunlight, a hundred feet above, it would pierce down, and she stretched her arm out, and she would see those pieces of light dapple across her arm as she walked. And she knew the way. She'd been here many, many times before with her mother, but this was the first time she was going by herself. And she walked along. She followed that path, and it, the path that wound around a boulder, and she, she went around that boulder, and she saw what she expected to see. The road, it, it forked off in two directions. But there, standing in the middle of that fork in the road, was a man. <sighs> he was tall. <laughs> he had that scraggly hair on his chin and on his arms and he asked her where she was going and and you know how it is when you see somebody you kind of like and your heart starts going <laughs> and your breath starts kind of picking up a little bit and that was what happened with her and she she just started saying the first things that came out of her mouth and into her mind she she said where she was going that she was going to that house that was in the clearing on on down that path and and that man he asked her well those legs of yours look fast. Why don't we race there? Well, she thought that sounded, that sounded good. <laughs> and he said, are you taking the path of the pins or the path of the needles? Because he knew that both of those paths, the pins and the needles, led back to that clearing in the woods. And she looked up at him and she said, I'm taking the path of the pins because she was a good girl. I I'm taking the path of the pins. Oh, well, I'll, I'll take the path of the needles, and we'll see who gets there first. Well, she was off. She raced, and she had those young, long legs, and she raced. But that man, he raced, and he got down on all fours, and he went faster because he was Bizu. He was Verwolf. He was Wolf. And he ran, and he got to that clearing in the glen, and he saw that house that that girl had described, that house by the oak tree. And he went and he knocked up onto the door. He knocked, and he heard a voice, Open the latch, pull that latch, and, and come on inside. And he pulled that latch. He came on inside. He saw the, that old woman over there in the bed, and he ate her up. <laughs> he ate all of her flesh. And <laughs> he ate some of her bones. <laughs> and he... <laughs> she was very stringy. She was very old. And, and <laughs> that meat, it was very tough. And, and then he had an idea. <laughs> he ate some of that meat, but he took some of the rest of that meat and he put it onto a plate and put that plate on the table. And then he took some of that old woman's blood. He poured it into a carafe and he put that carafe by that blood, by that... that meat on that plate. And then he went to that old woman and he took out part of her intestine and he went over to the door and he hung part of that intestine up in place of the latch on the door and he looked and that was just in time because he could see that girl starting to come down the path of the pens coming towards the house and, and so he went back inside. It was very dark inside this house compared with Glenn and that clearing. And so he went over and he, he took that woman's bonnet, he pulled that bonnet onto him, and those fingers, they were sticky from all that blood, but he pulled that, that sheet up over him and he waited. And that girl, that was just in time because that girl came down the path of the pens and she, <laughs> she had raced. <laughs> she looked around and she thought she'd gotten there first. <laughs> and she was a little disappointed not to see that man. <laughs> But she, she knocked on that door, and she heard that voice, Pull on the latch and come in! And so she grabbed onto that latch, and it, it kind of squeezed strangely in her hand. But she pulled on that latch, and it, it opened the door, and she walked on in. It was dark inside, compared with that glen. But she heard a voice coming from the bed, Oh, you must be hungry. I set out something to eat just for you. Go and, go and see it on the table. And she went over to that table. And what did she see? 
that meat on that plate and, and that carafe full of, of something liquid. And, and she took that meat, she picked it up with a fork, and she put it into a skillet, and, and she started to cook it, stoke the fire, and, and she seasoned it. And then she put that meat back on that plate, and, and she got a, a fork, and she started to cut herself a slice, and she raised it up to her mouth, and a cat that was curled up in the corner of that room, he spoke up and he said, The slut! She's eating the flesh of her grandmother! And that girl, she, she put her fork down, she said, Well, what was that? Oh, just throw your shoe at that noisy cat and keep eating! And she put that fork up to her mouth. And she ate it all down. <laughs> but it was stringy, and it was tough, and so she got very thirsty. So she saw that carafe, and so she poured herself a glass of what was in that carafe, and she raised that up to her lips, and right as she did, she heard a bird outside, and it was tweeting, and, and it said, you're, you're drinking the blood of your grandmother! And she turned, and she said, well, well, what was that? Oh, just throw your shoe at that noisy bird and keep eating! She threw both of her shoes at the cat and the bird, and, and she kept drinking. She drank all of that down, and she was full. And she heard that voice coming from the bed. Oh, you must be tired. Come and come into the bed and, and rest a while. And she went closer to that bed, and she got a feeling in her stomach. It was a queer, strange feeling. And she thought, well, that's odd. I, I ne I've never felt this way in my grandmother's house before. And as she got closer to that bed, she, that feeling, it started to grow a little bit. And so she got ready to get into bed, and she took off her apron. And she asked, and she said, well, what should I do with my apron? Oh, just throw it in the fire. You won't need it anymore. And she threw it into the fire. She took off her bodice. What should I do with, with my bodice? Oh, just throw it in the fire. You won't need it anymore. She threw it into the fire. She did the same thing with her skirt. She did the same thing with her stockings. Until there she was. And she got into bed. And she felt over and she felt something with her leg. She said, Grandmother, how hairy you are. Oh, the better to keep you warm with. Come closer. And she scooted a little bit closer. Grandmother, what long arms you have. Oh, the better to keep you warm with and hold you tight with. Come closer. Grandmother, what big teeth you have. Oh, the better to eat you with. Come closer. And she looked and she saw. And she looked down at herself. And she realized where she was. And her heart started going, and her breath started picking up, only it was a little different than it had been in that fork in the road. And she said the first thing that came to her mind, Grandmother, I have to go to the bathroom. What? Grandmother, I, I have to go to the bathroom. We'll just do it in the bed. Grandmother, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go outside. Well, very well, but, but that wolf... He took a thread, a red cord, and he tied it around her ankle. This is so I'll know where you are. And, and she left. And as she was walking out with that cord tied onto her, she grabbed a parcel that she left on that table, and she ran out into that clearing, that cord trailing behind her. And she ran over to a plum tree, and she took out of that parcel, she took her sewing scissors. And she took those scissors, and she cut that cord. And she took that red thread, and she tied it around a plum tree that was growing there in the glen. And she ran. She ran off through those woods until she came to another clearing, and there was a river coming through this clearing, and there were laundresses, three laundresses, who were washing these white sheets in the river. And they turned, and they saw this girl naked running through the woods. And they took one of those sheets, and they wrapped it around her shoulders, and they listened to her story. And, and right about that time, that wolf, he was sitting there 
in that bed, growing very impatient. And he hollered out to her, well, are you watering the trees or are you feeding the grass? And and after a while, he, his impatience grew to where he, he threw down the sheets. They were still kind of stuck to his fingers, but he threw down the sheets and he, he went out and he, <laughs> he followed that cord and he, <laughs> he came to that plum tree. <laughs> and he started to sniff her out. And he, <laughs> he got down on all fours and he started to follow her scent through the woods. And about that time, that girl had explained to those laundresses what had happened in the laundresses. They took that sheet, one of those sheets that they were washing, and they stretched it out over that river. They held it taut. And that girl, she walked across that sheet bridge. (laughs) And she got to the other side, and she turned around. That was just in time because she could see that wolf coming, raising up from all fours and walking through that glen. And, And the women, too, they were old and they were wise. And they looked and they saw something kind of comical. A wolf man who had a a blood-covered bonnet slightly askew, and he was trying to walk towards them. And and he said to them, he said, you make that that bridge for me so I can get across. And, And so they said, very well. They took that sheet, and they stretched it across that river. And that wolf man, he started to walk across that bridge. But as he got to the center, his paws, his feet, started to get a little damp. And he looked down and up to his ankles were covered in water and that sheet was starting to get squishy and he looked over at one of those laundresses right in time to see her say, Oop! And that sheet, it swallowed over him and that girl, as she ran off up the hill on the other side of that river, the last thing that she saw of that wolf was that sheet swallowing him whole and sinking underneath the ripples. She ran off with that anklet of red around her and that white sheet ran off home. So that wasn't the last of the girl. And it wasn't the last time that that girl came across a wolf in the woods and raced with him and beat him. But it was the last time she ever ate meat. She became a vegetarian after that. (laughs) Because after all, no one ever leaves a fairy tale unscathed.